Hello everybody and welcome back to Vintage Thursday. So today you join us in Vintage Thursday HQ. We haven't been in here for a while. Um, and we are working today on the Massey Ferguson TVO 35. Um, so the observant ones amongst you will notice the wheels are took off. So the purpose of today's video, we are going to investigate and cure um, what is quite a common problem on anything that come out of Banner Lane with drum brakes. Um, so this will cover everything from the T20, 35, 135, 148, 550, 230, 240. Everything is the same. And the drum brakes um, are what are part of, not the problem, but anyway, if you've got drum brakes, eventually you will get this problem. So what is the problem? And that problem is leaking half shaft oil seals. So we'll just take a little closer look at what that actually entails. Okay, so here we are on the end of the half shaft, and as you can see, very early stages of a leak here. Um, the, the oil is dripping down the brake back plates. When it's really bad, it'll be much wetter here. Everything will be oily, and it'll, it'll even run down the wheels. You know, when the wheels are on, when it gets quite bad. Um, this one has just started going. The one on the other side, you can see, is much worse. We've got quite a, a bit of oil here. Um, ignore this, I've just oiled these nuts so they come undone easy, that's not part of it. Um, this here is the problem. And this would have been running down the wheel as well on this side. Now, as you probably worked out for yourself, um, if it's leaking down the back of the brake back plates, it's also gonna be leaking inside and it, it will have ruined the brake shoes. Um, certainly on that side, maybe not yet on that side and um, so what is part of this job uh, basically if you've got leaking half shaft seals you will also have to change your brake shoes um, now brakes brakes are going to be a separate video all on their own um, you know i don't want brake relining and stuff to get lost in this video so next so this week's video we'll be doing the seals next video we'll be stripping down the brakes investigating why they're leaking and changing the shoes um, so that will be coming again as you can see we've already done a lot of work you know we stripped off the wheels are off the brake the brake drums are loose because that can be quite a fight at times um, so i've done all that off camera just to save time on the video so i think what i'm going to do now for this video is we're going to jump to um just pulling out the half shaft so the brakes will be stripped and um, just to keep that keep that in a separate video right so now you will notice we have a fully stripped off braking system all we've got left bolted on is the brake back plate and obviously the half shaft. Now something we're going to touch on uh, when we put the half shafts back in, it has got to be set up correctly, is what they call end float on the half shaft. So basically in a, in a crude kind of way of explaining it, you need a little bit of movement in each bearing, a little bit of in and out movement in each bearing um, just to make sure that they're running correctly and somebody once told me that in the centre uh, if there is no end float in the center of the diff the two half shafts will rub together now whether that's right or not i don't know i don't know what clearance there is in in the center um, but it is a fact that you've got to have the correct end float um, so we're going to set that up um, we'll show you how we set that at the end but i just want to show you how much end float we've got here before we start taking things apart so the easiest way to measure your end float is just to catch hold of the half shaft and sh you know see if it'll move in and out so there should be a you should hear a little rattle you know, like a little clunky sound. But on this one, there is absolutely none at all. So that we could have, you know, we could have wear in the bearings. It could just be set up wrong. When we get, we ain't gonna find out what's going on uh, till we get in there. So first thing we need to do, undo all these nuts on the back. That will then allow us to pull out the half shaft uh, and the brake back plate will then drop. So we need to make sure we catch that. Right, so there is all the studs out now. As you can see, pretty much all except for one brought the stud out with it. So before we put this back together, we should have to get these nuts off so we can screw the studs back onto the half shaft to put them in and then put the nuts on, nuts on last. Um, it's just kind of the, the proper way to do it. So hopefully now this should just pull out. We will see. No, doesn't want to pull out. 
Give it a little lip, little poke. There we go. There we go, all out. So here are the components. So we've got the half shaft, we've got the brake back plate, and these here are shims. Um, you may have seen these drop out. Um, so, these, so those shims were between the brake back plate and the, uh, the end of the axle housing. So these shims are what are responsible for setting the end float we were talking about earlier on. And as you can see, there's three of those combined together. Um, so they should, by adding or removing these, um, tighten up your bearing, which is in here. So to set your end float, you add or remove these shims depending on if it's too slack or if it's too tight. Um, so that will be what we'll be setting up when we come to put it all back together. So in this hub portion, there is obviously the bearing. There is an outer seal here and the inner seal runs here but is fixed into the end of the axle housing. So this so this one here is the one that's gone. The one here on the very end of the half shaft, that's only really a dust seal to keep dust from going into the bearing, um, which is in here. And it's held on by what we can just under all that grease. That is a shrink fit collar. So if we needed to change the bearing, we would have to drill and split that collar off and then press the bearing, press the shaft up through the bearing. So it will just give, by doing, pushing the bearing up against its, its race, we can give it a turn, that's very smooth, there's no wear in there. So there's absolutely no reason to change that bearing. They are very big chunky bearings um, and as long as they're kept well greased, they do last a very long time. So all we need to do to this bearing is clean all that old grease out um, and when what we've got to be careful of when we replace this seal that runs here no oil off in the back axle will get to this bearing it's not designed to so we need to make sure we get enough grease into here to see it through the next 20 years so this two oil seal arrangement was introduced quite late on in the ferguson t20 production run and um, it carried on throughout the 35s 135s and and from there on so the early T20s, they only have the extra seal in here with the bearing and the collar, the same design, um, different size, but a little bit smaller. Um, but to, re so to replace, so on the early T20s, if you get this leak in, which you do, it's very common, um, there is no, what they call an, out, an inner seal. So this is the inner seal, this is the outer seal. There is no inner seal on the early T20s. Now we do have a leak in T20 that's going to be coming into the, into the workshop this year at some point. I won't say soon because it might not be soon, but this year at some point. Um, so there are two ways of fixing a t an early T20. So we'll cover that in another video in the future because it's a little little bit more involved um, than just changing this, this inner seal. So I think what we'll do now, we will go and get all of our parts cleaned up, um, ready to put back together. And then we will come back when it's clean and we can start the reassembly process. Right, so we are now back. Everything is cleaned up. We have got our both half shafts, all the grease took out. Um, these are our new seals. Okay, so we've got a pair of seals. So these are the seals that run here. These are fixed into the end of the axle housings. So we've got four new gaskets. So very poorly made gaskets, what they should be doing. And the holes do line up okay. Um, but the center hole 
way too small that needs to be sitting down flush onto the, the casting um, and it's not so what I've had to do so I've got to cut this much out the center of each gasket to make sure it fits so that's how it needs to sit down flush onto the the ceiling face and um, very poorly made but there we are that's what we uh, you know you order stuff and it turns up and it don't fit but you know that's what's available so we've got to make the best of it right so we've got gaskets we got seals and while we were taking it apart okay so while we were stripping down taking off the brake back plate so this end of the brake shaft um, that sits into and the trumpet housing next to the differential inside the casting was these bronze bushes um, this one is you know half of it is left and this one is worn very thin so that's one for each side as you can see totally had it so we have a brand new pair of brake shaft bushes to go in as well so what we'll do um, we'll get them put in first so hopefully as you can tell these are very very thin quite delicate and we're gonna have to be careful putting these in we can't just put them in and tap them in with a hammer because they will get damaged so what we're going to have to do we're going to have to devise a little punch tool and it fits up inside of here and then we can tap the end of that tool with a hammer and that should press that into the housing so let's go and make that a minute and um, just a quick little job on the lathe um, and it will make our life so much easier if we spend a few minutes just to make that little punch on the lathe um, it will hopefully put these in in a few seconds nice and straight nice and square and undamaged Okay, so here is our punch tool and our bush. As you can see, it's a nice fit on there. Um, it, it is shorter than the bush, so it won't bottom out. And hopefully, it should just tap, 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 and be in nice and square. Let's give it a try. I'll just wipe the little hole out first, just to make sure it goes in easy. Perfect, nice and flush, nice and square, and it feels undamaged. The time will tell once we put the brake shaft in, that's how we're going to know for sure. Um, but it feels good. Yeah, so I think we're going to be okay. I think that worked. That's very pleasing. Right, so now both bushes are in. What we've got to do is get out <coughs> the cause of all this problem. So, this is the oil seal that is leaking. This is the one that's got to come out um, and get the new one put in. I guess it's not too difficult to get them out. Just a little pry bar. Work, work around gradually.
and there he goes so if it didn't leak before he's certainly gonna leak now anyway right that is for the bin so we'll just do everything a wipe out so this is the one that was leaking badly all down the brake back plate So this is our new seal, so spring side always goes towards the oil, so he's going to go in that way. Just tapping on the metal casing, don't damage the rubber, and we'll use our little press tool again. we go right so that is both new bushes in both new seals in now we're getting ready for the big assemble so earlier in the video I said the only grease these bearings get um, is what we put in there now and because these seals the oil seals we just put in run here these are designed not to run on axle oil they run on grease that we put in now and um, so when you're changing the bearings it's quite easy to get enough grease in there because obviously the bearing is out you can fill the race that is in the casting with grease put plenty of grease on the, the rollers before you install it and then it's easy you know there's plenty of grease in there then you put your collar on the top and, it, and it's finished you're ready to go back together now because we haven't done that we haven't disturbed the bearing but we have cleaned out all the old grease and i was wondering how are we going to get enough grease into the actual bearing to keep it going for the next 20 30 years whatever so I hit upon a plan I thought what we need to do somehow we need to get grease right into the bottom so I wonder if I could make like a little injector needly type of thing um, so again on the lathe I made this so it's got a grease nipple one end and a hole right the way through and a little bit of a stubby needly type thing that will fit between the rollers and inject grease right into the bottom of the bearing so when i made this a couple months back i put a little picture of it on instagram um, and i said you know can you guess what this is what have i just made um, there was a few funny guesses i can't remember them now but i know one person got it right only one got it right um it was clarence fudweasel um he said something like for getting grease into an inaccessible place um, which is as close as you could guess really without actually knowing what I was aiming at so he he didn't you know so there we are that's what he guessed anyway that's what it is so it is as yet untested but I can't see why it don't work but we're gonna find out now all right so we'll clamp on push into the bottom of the bearing Should have actually checked this coming out first, I suppose. There we go, look. It comes through. Seems to be working. Okay, so this is where the bearing would run in work. It would be tight up against its, its rollers. So we've got to get as much in now as we can. That is about as much as we're going to get in there, I reckon. I'm 
happy with that. Happy with the way. Happy with the way the little device worked. Worked as it was intended, which doesn't always happen. But I think we'll call that a success. Okay, so there we go. Both bearings now packed with grease. So next stage, we've got to replace all those studs back into the holes, ready for reassembly. So there we go, both half shafts ready to go back in, greased up, put the studger back in. What I'm going to do, um, so I'm going to do, I'm going to put the right hand side in and finish off camera and then we will come back and put the left hand one in because that is where we will then set up our end float and it's just a little bit easier to film this side. So we'll get that side done and come back and film putting this side in. Okay, so here we have the right hand side all back together. Let's get on and put the other one in. Just a couple of things to do to get ready. Firstly, we are just gonna put a little smear of grease into that new bush that we put into the axle and a little bit of oil onto the new seal and also on the seal, where the seal runs, just to make sure it all slips together nicely. So we'll put the, the gasket uh, the brake back plate will go on then the shims um, now if you remember earlier in the video we had no end float so i've put in an extra shim so hopefully we should have enough now so we'll see how it goes okay so first off we will put the gasket Then the brake back plate goes on if I've got clearance on the ceiling. Just. At the moment, it doesn't matter where it goes with regards to bolt holes lining up. Then we will put our final gasket. Followed by the shim lined up, holes in the shims lined up. And then our oil. So just to lubricate the seal so as it goes in nicely. So a little bit more oil onto the seal. Try not to let that run down. Okay, so here's the tricky bit. Um, and this is probably gonna be, be the bit where I stand in the way and get in the light and you're not gonna see what's happening. Okay, so. Gently through the seal so we don't damage where the splines are. Engage into the diff when we get there, line up our brake rod, line up our studs, all at the same time. Okay, so it's all lined up, it's all fitted, it's turning, and we've got to get all our spring washers and nuts on the back and get them up tight. 
before we can tell if we've got our end float in or not. Um, the problem with setting your end float, it is not a quick job. You have to get all the full set of nuts on and get them up tight before you can test. If you just think, oh, I can put two on, you know, opposite two, opposite ones, you think you'll set it, you'll do the rest of your, put the rest of your nuts on, do them up, and it will not be the same. Okay, so that is all nuts tight on both sides. Um, spring wash is in there, everything is done up where it should be. So when I talk about end float, what that means is how far basically in and out this half shaft will float by cutting hold of it and giving it a tug. Um, the book says it's got to be between eight and ten thousandths of an inch, which is pretty much not a lot, but it will be enough to be able to feel. Um, and hopefully if, for the microphone to pick up, you should hear it a little clunk if it's right. So we just catch hold of the and pull it. You can definitely hear that. And that is far too much. That is way more than ten thousandths of an inch. So now what we've got to do, we've got to take it all apart again, take all the nuts off, take out a shim, or looking at that, probably take out two shims um, and put it all back together and try it again. So like I said at the start, this is not a quick job. It's frustrating, it takes a long time, but having too much is better than not having enough because we've got those shims in there to come out. If it was still tight with those extra shims, we would have to go and buy more. But what we've got to do is just time, take all the nuts off again, take out two, I'm going to take out two shims, I reckon, um, and tighten up again because that is a lot of play. And what you've got to remember, um, I've put four gaskets in there, um, and that's all, even though they've compressed a little bit with the, with the, with the nuts doing up, now that's all creating that gap. So that's all got to come apart again um, and uh, put it back together and recheck. So I'll spare you all that. So I think just before we take it all apart, um, we're going to actually prove to you how far out this measurement is. Um, so I've rigged up a, a dial test indicator um, to measure. So I know as soon as I show this setup, I'm going to get comments saying, well, I don't have one of those indicators. I can't do that. Um, well, you don't need one. And I'm only doing this. I'm showing you it because I've got it and I can show you it. Um, you don't need it. You can do it by feel and by kind of sound is how far, you know, when we get there, when we get it right, um, how far actually and where is right. But um, just to prove how far out it is, because I can, we're going to do it. So let's have a look. Okay, so we are looking down onto the indicator. Now, this is not going to show up well, um, but as soon as I turn a light on, you can't read, you can't read the dial. But anyway, so what I've got on the edge of the gauge, um, these two pointers on the outside of the dial are set at ten thousandths of an inch apart. Okay, so if that needle moves between the two pointers, that is ten thousandths of an inch. So that is what we're aiming for when we finish. And what we've actually got. If I gently try and pull it out and not make the camera fall off, you'll see that needle is moving. There we go. It was such a, he went almost a full revolution. Not quite, very nearly. So one full revolution of this dial is a hundred thousandths of an inch. Um, so it did about 90 thousandths. So we have got to take out 80 thousandths worth of shims. So that has given us a bit of an idea how much we need to take out. Um, like I say, you don't need this, but I've got it. So I'm showing you. Right, so I've actually taken out four shims now. So each one of these shims is 20 thousandths of an inch in thickness. So I've taken four out. That'll take us to 80 thousand out. So we'll have another recheck on our dial, dial indicator, see where we are. Um, but before, before we do that, we'll just show you how we measure accurately with a micrometer. Right, so this is a 0 to 1 inch micrometer, which means it will measure anything basically under an inch, um, and it will measure it in thousandths of an inch. So the end, so this end of the micrometer turns, and this is the, this as, it, so as you turn this, this end, this rod will withdraw up into itself and then we're measuring the gap that we've got left 
So on a 0 to 1 inch micrometer, what you get, every one of these lines that you might not be able to pick up is 25 thousandths of an inch. And on this barrel, we have got 0 to 25. So if we measure, just make it easy, hopefully you can see. So you can see the 0 is 0. So the 0 is closed. Um, that 1 there means 100 thousandths of an inch. So if we were to put the barrel to line up with that one, that would be exactly 100 thousandths. If we open it slightly, that would be 105, 110, 115, 120, 125. And that would then uncover the next line on the, on the graduation. So that's how you read a micrometer. I guess what we're going to do is take our shim measure the thickness with the micrometer just by inserting it in the gap gently tightening and hopefully you can read it's actually reading 21 but it's close enough to assume that's a, a 20 thousandths shim so all these four together will be 80 right Let's go and check our dial again. Right, so hopefully you can read the dial now. Should be able to. So I reset it to zero. Now I've got to be really careful when you're doing this in the workshop. What you do is you catch hold of this and you give it a good shake. But doing that, the the, the dial indicator is sensitive enough to measure the actual rocking of the tractor very slightly. So we've got to be careful. So we'll set to, we'll pull it right out. We'll set to zero. And gently push it in and we've got to about 15 so we're aiming for 10 we've got 15 shims are 20 so we can't take any more out so we're going to leave it we're going to leave it at 15 that's close enough so if you're doing this at home and you don't have a dial indicator just listen for that little clunk that would be that would you know if you've got this little bit of movement that'll be plenty like i said earlier on you don't need one of these so there we go that will bring our half shaft seal video to an end we have stripped cleaned new seals put all back together set it up and it's now ready for refitting the brakes um so like i said the brakes are going to be a totally separate video so we'll leave it here so there we go so thank you very much for watching uh, don't forget to subscribe, leave us a comment, and hope you found this helpful. So that'll do, and I will say thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.